this is the phase where this competition is won and lost because one tiny mistake on the cross country course and it's game over. It's shorter than ever before, fewer fences and a faster optimum time at just over 10 and a half minutes. But that doesn't mean that it's any easier. And we've been taking a closer look with those who have to jump it. The important thing early on is to get into a galloping rhythm to allow your horse to stretch. But when you get to fence four and on the leaf pit, it's a big rider scare, a massive drop of three foot 11. First major question is at fence six. Here we are at fence six, Discovery Valley. It's the first major question on the course. It's got A, B, C and D elements to it. Element A, as you can see, a nice round topped fence give you a nice jump in but behind it quite a steep slope up to a big bank at B. One, two. The horses are land about here. It's four of my strides to every one of the horses. So one, two, three, four, one stride. One, two, three, four, two strides. One, two, three, four, three strides. B, as you can see here, a big ditch, a big bank up a big effort. The horses again will land up the bank around here and then they're faced with the C element which is this narrow angled brush. One, two, three, four. So one strike to the narrow angled brush and after they've jumped this to top it all off the D element is also a very narrow fence that could cause problems. Meanwhile Paul Tapner setting up for the first trunk at Discovery Valley, one, two, three, up one stride and over the brush, does that very accurately, very well done through Discovery Valley. That's the riders really have to keep their wits about them, they pop over Herbert's Hollow at fence seven and then there's a big crowd and another big question. Well this is number eight, the first in a series of trout hatchery fences. Last year actually this was the long route. But everyone thought it was so horrid, no one jumped it at all. This year, Mark Phillips is making sure we have to. Big jump into the water, decent drop, and the quick route through the water is to take three strides and jump the step out on quite an acute angle. But here you've got to get a good clean jump up the step, landing slightly into the bank, and then to take one brave stride to jump what is really quite a big and yet narrow hedge, um, requiring quite a test of accuracy as well. Once you've gone over that, you've then got to go through the top bit of a trout hatchery, which is on acute turn, it's going to waste time, and it's actually the turn back into 10, meaning that you've got a, a full 360 degree circle here, which is going to waste time. So the house at number 10 isn't a difficult fence in itself. What is difficult is the fact that from here you have no idea that in the water, around the corner, is a goose. But once you've landed, it all becomes visible and the rider has really got to pick up a good stride and ride positively down through the edge of the water to it. Because quite often the horses just don't read it very correctly, make a stupid mistake and you could end up having a, a nasty jump over that, that goose or even a trip. You've then got a sharp turn right up another bank. I personally think this section of the course is very tiring and will really impact on how horses go around the rest of the course. Water complex, this horse owned by Gillian Jones, a long supporter of Mary. And Mary just adopting the safety position through this combination of fences, which means the lower leg is forward and the rider sits back. Mary King with thousands of fans around the course. This woman whose career spans almost 20 years after all that twisting and turning and splashing through the water, there's a chance to get the gallop on again, to pick up some time. Big fences at 11 and 12. A combination again, the Maltings branch at 13 before hooking up and really concentrating for this. So here we are at fence 14. There are three parts, A, B and C. Part A and part C are very, very narrow brushes. And part B is a big wide ditch, so you've got to keep the horse very, very concentrated and focused to jump part A, it's incredibly narrow. And then you've got to jump part B, which is this huge ditch, which they have painted some yellow paint on to try and help your horse see the landing and jump out over it. 
And then still keep the focus, keep the balance, keep the horse securely between your hands and your leg to jump yet another very, very narrow brush, which you've got to make sure you don't run out at. Ollie coming to this combination of fences, a very narrow brush. They've got to skip over the ditch after two strides, very smooth, and then two strides and out over another arrowhead brush, making it look so easy. But 15 is relatively straightforward, but 16 is not. The dairy farm is a combination of doubles, could be very influential. A couple more freestanding fences, allowing the horses to gallop again. But towards the end of the course, the questions keep coming. Let's find out what the youngest rider in the competition makes of fence 22. Here we are at the new big ditch. We've come down quite a steep hill, and I think by this time the horse is going to be quite tired as it's towards the end of the course. What I'm going to do is just rebalance coming down the hill and hopefully roll on to quite a deep stride to this. You can really see it's quite a wide fence and quite high and I think to an inexperienced rider it will seem quite ridiculous. But in terms of the horse's jumping effort, you know, if you've got a good stride they can brush through the hedge. Inside the last kilometre now Andrew Nicholson coming down to the new ditch at the Jubilee Leap and sails over that and heads on up to the arena. Then we've got to go up into the main arena and there's five fences left to go and then hopefully we'll be cantering through the finish clear. Well, that's what the riders made of the course on foot. It's one thing to walk it, it's another thing entirely to ride it. So let's find out how this international lineup fared with our commentary team of Harriet Harrison and David Goldstrom.